Okay, today's message is coming out of Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, and the heading of today's message is called How to Fight Life's Battles. The heading of today's message is called How to Fight Life's Battles. As we begin to look into the Word of God today, you will recognize the heading is called How to Fight Life's Battles. And the reason why it's called that is because each and every day you recognize that you wake up that there is a battle. There is a battle taking place the moment that you wake up. Each and every day that you wake up, there is a battle taking place for your soul. There is a battle taking place for you to be angry, for you to be happy, for you to be sad. Every single day you go through, there's a battle. So the heading of today's message is called, How to Fight Life's Battles. We're starting with verse 1 in the book of, of Hebrews, of chapter 11. And it goes on to state, Now faith is the sum of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things not seen. It's hoped for, but yet not seen. I was driving down the road today in my truck, and the wind blew through my truck, and it blew so hard that it moved the truck. It cut my wind off because I had the window all the way open. It cut my wind off because I had the window, thank you. I had the window all the way open in my truck because I like the fresh air in the wintertime. I like it. So anyway, so you see, you see here that it's like a wind that you cannot see, but it's there. And that wind hit me and cut my air off in my body, and I said, man, and the only thing I could think of at that time was the ocean. And I don't know why I thought of the ocean, but I did. It was like I, I could smell the ocean when that air hit me. I felt like it came from the ocean. That that cool air was coming off of some Gulf Coast that hit me in the face all the way up here. And it probably was possible. It smelled like sea air, but it hit me hard. And you know when you're down in the ocean and you get hit with a wave when you're not looking, you know the damage it does. You ever been hit with a wave when you're not ready? Has your face ever scraped the bottom of the ocean floor from a wave? Can I get an amen? Amen. Have you ever looked at your arm? Have your pants ever been ripped off of your body from a wave? To where you're like, oh my goodness! Huh? Did you not know which way to go up or down? You didn't know even where you were. And as soon as that got up, me, got hit with another one. Boy, that's tough, ain't it? Ocean's no joke. I was watching today. As we were sitting there, and we were getting ready to get into worship today up on the wall, I was paying attention to something. I was paying attention to the ocean. I was paying attention to the rivers. And I was paying attention to how powerful God is. I was paying attention when it showed you the outer, the outer clips of the world outside in space, and how it said, God made every star. It talked about the sun on the worship today, how great and mighty he allows that sun to breathe and make you warm and to present his power, how at night he darkens it. How does he do it? He darkens it and makes just a moonlight shine upon you. Some people might not know this, some people, most people might know it, but you might not know. The moon's not, God doesn't have no light, the sun is shining on it. 
before you get up is about. Verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Verse 2. Provided the elders obtain a, a good report. By what? Faith. So if you don't have faith, you can't fight life's battles. If you don't have faith in God, you cannot fight life's battles. Listen, I'm going to tell you what. If you're going to go to life having faith in yourself and not in God, it doesn't work. The creator that's taking care of the atmosphere right now, of the stars not hitting the earth, of the eclipses that just happened last week, huh? Uh, as the meteor showers passed the earth recently, unbelievable meteor showers. I didn't know it was a meteor shower. I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't know it was one. One night I said, there was a falling star. And then I said, there was another one. I got another one, another one. I said, look at all the falling stars. I thought the whole thing was coming down on us, but it was a meteor shower. Have you ever seen a meteor shower? It's intense. It's beautiful. But imagine none of those hit the earth with a rocking past us. Huh? What happens if God all of a sudden says, you know what? I'm just going to let this crater 60 times bigger than the earth rock at once and see if it can handle it. Huh? Who's stopping that from happening? Who's protecting you? Who makes sure there's oxygen here and that the ozone layer hasn't finished up yet? Huh? Who wonderfully watches over the baby in the mother's womb? Who watches over that baby? Who architects it? Who makes it as beautiful as it is? Do you do that? Do you make that child who's God used your body as a cocoon for that baby to hold itself in you? Ladies, you remember that time. You remember the time when that baby was in you. It was wonderful. It was exciting. It was so different. It was nothing that anyone could take away from you. You experienced a human being inside of your body. When it kicked you, huh? And you know at times, listen ladies, let's face it. You know at times when you knew it was listening to you. You know at times when you were singing to it, it hurt you. You knew at times where it was uncomfortable. You knew when your baby was uncomfortable. Yes or no? Did you know when your baby was uncomfortable in your body? Yes, it let you know. You said, what's wrong? Why are you moving so much? You knew your baby. God created that baby inside of you. He formed it. He formed it. So how do we fight life's battles? We think of God creating the baby that was inside your body. We think of God that helped someone live when they were supposed to die. We focus on God for our faith. Not the circumstance, not the problem that you're going through. See, when you focus on your problem, it's God. It's God. <coughs> Let's move on. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of what? God. The worlds are framed by what? The word of God. So the things that are seen are not made of things which do appear. So we see it through faith. We understand that the world are framed by the word of God. Your child was created by the word of God. You were created by the word of God. God created all evil and good. People don't want to hear that. Look at the book of Isaiah. Look for it. God created evil and good. He created all things for his good pleasure. God created the world. In six days, he created it. On the seventh day, he rested. God created the whole world in six days. So how do you fight your battles? Huh? How do you fight life's battles? You trust in God that created the world. That, that made that wonderful little child that was inside your body. Who could do that but God? Could a man do that? He can't. Only God does that. Let's move on. To wait, we understand that the worlds are framed by the word of God, so the things which are seen were not made of things which do what? Appear. So everything that was made was made by an unseen God. Can you see God? You can't see. He says this in his word. Anyone that would see me would die. 
can't see God until you get to the other side and you see another spot, the presence of God. It's more brighter than a, than a, uh, a, a welder. When you see it sparking, God's brighter than that. Let's move on. By faith, Abel offered up unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Here, by faith. What is faith? Faith is something that you practice. If you're not in the Word of God, you're not stirring your faith, and you can't overcome the battles throughout the day. Listen, I'm telling you, if you're fighting your battles without God in your life, you're in trouble. You need God's Word to be in your heart to fight your battles, he said. You need God. So how do we fight God's, uh, how do we fight life's battles? By letting God's Word in us. Let's go. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. By which he obtained witness that he was righteous. And God testified of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. Let's go on to verse 5. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see, see death, and was, and was found not, because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had his testimony that he what? Please God. This man, Enoch, please God so much that he says, I'm no longer going to let you suffer on that earth. You're coming home with me. He came down on his chariot of fire. Now, maybe you might not want to believe that. Well, guess what? You better, because he created that baby that was in the fire. you got to believe that chariot came down. If you believe that God created your child inside you, you better believe that chariot came down, because it did. It came down and hit Enoch, that he would not see death. He was taken by Almighty God. And I'm telling you, I've got a mentor right now, no lie. His name is Jesus Velez. He lives in New York. I hope he gets to see this sometime, that he watches this. I'm going to tell him. He gets in the Word of God like 12 hours a day, six days a week. He loves God. And he said, William, I'm not coming to the grave. God's coming for me. He did it for Enoch. Why couldn't he do it for him? If you believe, it can happen. With faith, all things are possible. Let's move on. Verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. If you're not in your word faithfully and you have faith, you can't fight God's battles. I mean, you can't fight the battle of life without God's word. You can't. And I'm not talking about dabbling either. I'm talking about getting serious with God. We know how hard things are about to become, people. It's not like it used to be talked about. It's not if, it's when, it's here, it's coming. Don't fight God with life's battles without God's word. Don't do it. Let's go on. Without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that for, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a what? Rewarded to those that what? Diligently what? Seek him. Remember who God is. He's the word. Are you diligently seeking God? Here's how you know whether you're diligently seeking God. And you have to be honest with yourself. Every time before you come here, how is your Were you hostile? Was your mind always up and down? Was you just didn't have the testimony to be smiling at people? No lie. Check this out. The Lord of my witness. I walked into the bank the other day, and it was the first time in my whole entire life. The lady said, how was your day? I said, well, it's raining. It's kind of gloomy out. And I used to tell them, why are you guys always gloomy? I can't stand coming to this bank with you people being gloomy all the time. I said, I'm being honest with you. Uh, it's hard for me to come to this bank with that because we're always upset. Tell us for some reason have attitudes. I don't know what it is. They, they hate the world most of them. They do. So I said, please stop. So one time I came in, one time I came in to sleep recently, and it was raining bad. It was nasty. It was cold. I said, oh, so he said, how was your day? And they knew it bad out. So I said, well, it's rainy and nasty, so it's kind of like a little rough on me today. And she goes, oh, you're so miserable today, and you're so upset. And my buddy Billy was there, which is me and his brother, that used to come to church here. She works at the Dollar Tree now, but up at Walmart. But uh, I turned around, and I looked at Billy, and then I looked at them, and I said, yeah. I said, every time I come in here, I said, you guys have been so miserable, it's rubbed off on me. I'm really afraid to where I'm going with it now. I get upset like you guys do now. I'm scared. <laughs> Billy said, get to him back. <laughs> you know? Come on, man. we got to be happy. If you're not in God's word, you can't be happy. You can have a big cat happiness, huh? Most politicians got that. Oh, man, if they only knew what's about to happen. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> That's how I feel every time I see it. <coughs> I mean it. When they're on there, I can see the stress behind it. It's like the gray comes in in flocks. Every week, new ones. Full flocks of gray. What are they doing? 
the fourth, first, four year, first, four, first four years are too bad. The next one, it takes a toll on their life, boy. I'll tell you what. How would you like your heart to go through what they go through in eight years? Would you let it go through that? Would you take that job on? That's what I said one day. I would never take that job. Oh my God. Let's go on. <clears throat> it's the truth, man. They suffer. We got to pray for them. I was praying for them today. I was thinking about them on them today. No lie. People are paid. You know? It's, it's, it's terrible. It's like a bark word. Let's go on. Verse 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please him, but he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that is a reward to them that what? Diligently seek it. Are you diligently in the word of God? Do you want, do you want an ability to fight life's battles? Do you want to be able to fight life's battles? You've got to get in the word of God. And if you're not in it, it doesn't matter. Everyone's an individual. You'll, you'll go through individually. If you're in it faithfully, it won't be so bad. It makes life easier being in God's word. Listen to what he said there. God said, verse 6, <clears throat> Without faith it is impossible to please him, but he that come to God must believe that he is and that he is a what? Rewarded to them that what? Diligently seek him. Did he say he's a reward to those that diligently seek him, or did William say that? God said he's a reward to those that diligently seek him. So here's the deal. God said he's going to reward you. What is your reward going to be? It's going to be a mental a mental reward, an emotional reward, right? A spiritual reward, right? A physical reward, and there will be a financial reward from it. God rewards. He rewards. Let's move on. Verse 7. By faith, Noah being warned of God of the things that uh, not seen and yet moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by that which he condemned the world and became the hearers of the righteous, which is by what? Faith. Men know for a fact that the world is covered with water. They know it. It's a fact. I want to tell you, I'm proud to say this. July 17th, my birthday, the ark went in that kind of piece of earth. I thank the Lord for that. Go look at it. Look at Genesis. The seventh month of the 17th day, the ark touched earth again. Man had a chance to replenish after all those generations died from drowning. They died from unbelief. But no one knew he did that ark. He listened. By faith you were saved. By faith you will be saved through your problems. By faith you will be saved from your tribulations. By faith. If you don't have faith, you cannot. Please God. Let's move on. Verse, uh, uh, verse 8. Right? Yeah. By faith Abraham, when he was called, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after he received for an inheritance, he obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whether he went. Abraham went out by what? Faith. By faith he went out. And guess what? He had a child, didn't he? Did Sarah bear forth a little boy named Isaac? Well, guess what? Sarah didn't believe. Her faith was lacking. She was 99 years old. You can understand that. I uh, hope you ladies don't plan on having a child at 99, because it might be more, a little bit more expensive to bring up by then, don't you think? But anyway, I think that was okay. Formula, huh? Can you imagine birth room? Trying to even get up to go out the camera fry at night. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, that was a tough one. Hey, <laughs> come on, Abraham, get up! <laughs> so, anyway, she laughed when it came time to have the baby. But let's look at the full picture of it. Her laughing made God name the baby laughter. This is Isaac. The name Isaac means laughter. So, God named the child. Oh, you want to laugh? Okay, now your baby's name. Isaac forever, so that you can laugh knowing that I had to have a baby. But God said it, it's so. Uh, if God says something's going to happen, it's going to happen. Let's move on. <clears throat> so we see in verse 8, by faith, Abraham, when he was told to go out in a place which he should have to receive for inheritance, <clears throat> he what? He obeyed. How do you obey? Give him the word of God. You're disobedient if you're not in the word of God. Believe me, God chases the ones that he loves that they repent. Therefore, bear for fruit of righteousness. God takes this. He loves you. Don't worry if you're not the word. He's going to come. Remember how I always tell you in the past? He'll knock the snout out of you. Amen? I, I'm not going to say what it is, but I prophesied something. I prophesied something here just the other day. And I said, I'm telling you, the Lord's telling me. And it just, just right here, something happened in this church. And it happened. The same day that I said it, was that right? Same day that I said, I said, this is happening here in this church right now. And it was. Just because God said so. I mean, it's the way it is. Let's move on. <clears throat> okay, by verse 9, by faith, he shall journey to the land of promise, 
better than sacrifice people. Obedience. How do you get obedient? Listen, God's not asking you to do anything by, besides stay in His Word and let Him change your life. God's not asking you to jump mountains, hills, do this and that. He's saying you cannot do it. Faith has to be born in you, just like that baby was born from you, and that cord was cut, and now it was on its own to breathe, right? Was it breathing air inside of you? No, it was an embryo. When it came out, what did God do? He breathed his spirit into your baby. After he created it inside of you. Ladies, isn't that exciting? God created a being inside of you. We can never experience that. That is something that you got up on us. I'm serious. That's special. You don't think so? Tell me you didn't think it was special. It was special. When that baby was born, listen! When that baby was born and it was in your arms, how did you feel? How did you feel? How did that moment feel? You were thankful that it had all its little fingers, huh? And its toes, right? You were thankful that the nurses said, your baby's really healthy. Huh? And then you were figuring when they took it, you know, the room, they might be switching kids. I know that went through your mind. I kept your eyes open through that window, didn't you? Thank you. 
If you're not in God's will, be, you better judge yourself. Seriously, and say, am I really saved? Am I going to make it? And you know what the Lord said to me today? I, I got up early this morning, and time flew to 12 o'clock. No lie, it flew to 12 o'clock real fast. And I said, oh my goodness, Lord, time flies. And this is when he spoke to my heart. I said, wait, time stops for no one. Time stops for no one. Your life is back. And this is what he said to me, too. He said, time stops for no one. That's what he said to me. He said to me that. I said, Lord, look, it's 10 after 12. I've got to eat or whatever. Look what time it is already. He says, don't stop for no one. And you're depreciating value. You will be gone soon. Time don't stop for you, people. You've got to get it right before it runs out. Can you, can, can you admit this? Time is just like an hour.
How we're able to get through life's battles each day. How we're able to get through life's battles each day. And we're talking about faith here. And being in God's Word faithfully creates that faith. And when you're not in His Word, listen, you can't tell me that life is great without God's Word. You can't tell me that. God created you. We talked about it before. He created the child inside the mother. God is the one that brings peace. God is the one that brings strength. Without God, life is terrible. It's terrible. We move on. Uh, I got it. Uh, 19. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence he also received him in figure. 20. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning the things to what? Come. By what? Faith. By faith, he what? He blessed them. By faith. But listen, they had faith because they trusted in who? God. And they were in the Word of God. Because they stayed in the Word of God. When you come away from the Word, you've got to make your faith start failing. Huh? Listen, hear the Spirit today. Nasty things come into your life when you're not in God's Word faithfully. They get in your mind, and then they're beginning to tell you what to do. And you do what they tell you to do. Oh, yeah, you become what that thing lets you become. The opposite of God is evil people. And when God's not in your heart, you're doing evil. It doesn't matter who it is in this room. If you're not sure with God, you're doing bad things. I don't care who you are. Amen? Amen? Amen. You can't serve two masters. Listen, you're going to serve God, and you're going to serve yourself, and yourself is going to... I did not say a word, did I? Finish 
shot. 22. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandments concerning <coughs> his bones. So by faith, jo Joseph told them what they needed to do with his bones. By faith. By faith. Listen, I'm telling you, if you're not in the Word of God, you're not practicing your faith. And if you're not practicing your faith, hear this now. There is some type of substance outside of God that's polluting you. If you're not in God's Word of faith, I don't care what it is. I mentioned it already, so I'm not going to mention it again. You know what's polluting you. You know what's gotten you away from God and whether it should be there. And listen, here the Spirit. You know it's killing you. It's destroying you. It's got you one foot, it's got your foot one foot closer to hell. One foot closer. We talked about this before, not long. Life is an hourglass that's turned over, and when it runs out, you're done. Time stops for no one. Your life is passing by that fast. Oh, it is. Let me tell you something. There's not many people in this room that don't have long before judgment. That, uh, how, look, look at the hourglass in the spirit's realm. How much time goes in your hourglass? If you would measure your hourglass, how much time is left if it was full? How much is left? How much time have you got left before God's going to judge you? We're talking about fighting life battles and not playing around it. We're talking about letting God change your life. Get those devils out of your life. We all know what's killing us. We all know what's in our life that's killing us. We all know. We know. And you know what's such a shame? That we don't come to God enough so that God can take it out of our lives. That God can take it out of our lives. We don't come to Him enough and not think He's us. Huh? Oh, yeah. God just said these are cool, so I can take more of your day. Huh? A little bit of this, huh? A little bit of that, a little bit of that. Here we go. We're going to stop. Let's move on. 23, by faith Moses, when he was born, was hid there three months of his parents, because they saw he was a proper child, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. So what did Moses do? He did what he was supposed to do. He wasn't afraid. You know what Moses said? I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than dwell in the tents and sin with those wicked people that I know that are going to hell. Do you know when Moses came off the mountain, people? Do you know when Moses came off the mount, he came down with the Ten Commandments and they were having orgies and doing filthy stuff in the presence of God? They did attack, they did wicked, vile things. And guess what happened? Moses said, those that will serve God, step forth because you're about to see something. And the wicked ones laughed. They wanted to do their drinking and smoke their stuff. And, ha, 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 I got time. Ha, 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 I got time. Ha, ha, God's not going to take me. Ha, ha, we do that in right now. We do that. We roll the dice with God. And what happened? When the righteous stood forth and said, we're sorry, God, forgive me, the earth opened up. And 3,000 of their souls were sucked down into hell. And we burned in there still to this day. We roll the dice with God. God understands my sin. I don't have to learn how to fight the battles. That preacher don't know what he's talking about. Okay. Okay. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's move on. Listen, the Lord wants me to tell you this. He's saying, thank God that I'm real. That God is real. He can take away the struggle in your life. He said, you better hear that part. Preacher, be a little rough. But guess what? There's a way out. Be thankful that the caseworker's not the answer. The psychiatrist ain't the case. The work, the answer, the pills, the drugs, the apple. They're not the answer. Thank God is going to make a way out for you today. But what we need when I finish with this sermon to come up to this altar and repent, because you know, listen, listen, you know what's in your life that's taking you out. There's a way out. There is a way out. Thank God, there's a way out. There is a way out. Thank God, there's a way out. Amen? That's what there was no way out. Listen to this. 
trip today. Bring them down! Wind came off the river. Blue sky. West End from Lewisburg. Started knocking trees down over the side of the park. I said, Lord, what is that? He said, you pulled the tongue on me. That's a good relationship, I guess. Because he did it! He brought an unbelievable wind, a tornado, right afterwards, bounced off my, my property in my backyard off a tree. And I uh, lived in Irish Valley, F3, wiped out the whole valley eight years ago. It bounced off my tree. And I said, Lord, what is that? He said, that's the power of your ministry. I'm going to raise it up like I'm part of the world of Moses. Amen? One last thing that's important for you guys to hear. It's important. It's very important. It's going to have way out I said, Lord, years ago, I, I fasted 21 days, and I said, Lord, create this ministry. You created the Latter Rain. Latter Rain ministry, right? Latter Rain church. So, Latter Rain. So, last week, he came to me, and I said, Lord, what does the Latter Rain mean? Like, where is heaven? Why is this place filled right now? He said, wait, pay attention to this. Latter Rain, out of your belly, shall flow rivers of living water, right? And I said, yes, Lord. Explain it to me. He says, Woody, I'm pouring my waters through you, the latter rain, all over the nation and the world through YouTube. I said, what are you trying to say? He said, I'm using your vessel for my latter rain. We're everywhere. Rome, Paris, France, Italy, China, Beijing. Right now, after tonight, this is going to be all over the world. Just like the rest of them are. Imagine that. One pulpit, God's pouring out his rain all over the world. That's the God I want to serve. Amen? See what he's doing? You just got to be available. You got to be ready. You got to do what he wants you to do. You guys see it out there. Are you watching it?
being perfect. Amen.